Hello everybody and thank you much for watching. In this video I would like to show you how you can connect your Galaxy tablet with the DeX support to a Windows machine and use DeX on Windows. Currently only some of the Galaxy phones has this feature. In a nutshell if you don't know what the DeX on Windows means is basically you can take your Galaxy phone with the DeX on Windows support connect it via USB-C cable to the Windows machine and you will be able to use DeX on Windows. A full explanation what the DeX on Windows is, I will leave a link to a Samsung page about DeX on Windows in the description below for you to go and check it out. But if you're already a DeX user, you should know what the DeX on Windows is. In this video, it's not the phone, it will be the DeX device. I will use my Galaxy Tab S6. Just to show you before showing you the setup, what happens if I'll connect my Galaxy Tablet to the PC? So this cable goes outside the camera in the corner. I do have a Windows computer running and then I have the HDMI cable coming back and connected to this. So if I press start menu, as you can see, the Windows 10 start menu showing up. So I connected the tablet using USB-C cable to that PC that's just down there in the corner. And that's all I'm getting right now is allow USB debugging message. What this message means and why it's showing, I will explain to you in a second. But idea is basically I have this one running and if I'll run the DEX on Windows software, it will try to detect the device, but it's not going to work because tablet, the Galaxy Tab S6, as of recording this video, does not have this feature, just not existed. Maybe Samsung will allow this in the future, but at currently this feature is only on some of the Galaxy phones. So Samsung DeX software on Windows running, nothing's connecting, giving me an option, uh, giving me an icon saying that connection is not happening and it's telling me that I need to make sure that the phone is properly connected to a PC, not the tablet. So how to go around this and make it working? So I'm gonna disconnect the tablet I'm gonna leave it here for you to see that I'm not tinkering anything with the tablet. There is a, a free software available online on the GitHub uh, pages. If I open Chrome browser and if I'm gonna search for QTSCR, QTSCRCPY. Anyway, the link to this page I'll leave in the description below. By the way, the resolution I'm using is 3440 by 1440p, but I basically increased everything up to 200% just for easier for you to see what's happening on my screen. So let's go back to this page. So here you go. And the first link is going to be barry ran slash QTSCRSPY. So this is the page where you will find the software. If you go on this page, and you scroll down, there's a lot of documentations uh, and screenshots of exactly what this program does. If you keep scrolling down, you should find an option saying Windows. If you click on the link next to uh, uh, the keynote, if you click on that link, it will open another page and it's gonna give you a, a, a timeline exactly what's been updated and you should find the assets for you to download. There is the 64-bit version and 86-bit version. I'm using 64-bit version. Installation is basically very simple. You will download the zip file. You need to extract that zip file onto your Windows uh, machine. I extracted this on the desktop, so I have icon here in the corner. So if I'm gonna move this here, actually let me quickly uh, auto arrange the icons. So this is the extracted folder. This is a zip file. I downloaded it and this is the extracted file, the folder that I need to use. So if I open that up, inside there we'll find the folder. Inside the folder is a bunch of files and one exe file, QTSCRCPY. This is the program. So to this for this program to work with your Galaxy device, you need to enable USB debugging on your Galaxy tablet. How to do that? you need to first enable the developer options on your Galaxy device. How to enable developer options? There is at least a billion videos on YouTube how to do that. After you enable the developer options in the settings, at the bottom, you should find the option for you to go into developer's options. And inside there, I'm gonna scroll down until I find the option that says USB debugging. And it's somewhere here hidden, which I can find it now. Let me quickly, it's a lot of options here. Here we go, found it. Debugging and the one of the options here, the light should say USB debugging. I had that one turned on. So when this is turned on, I'm just gonna go back to main menu. I'll put this tablet holder just closer to a camera for you to see that the tablet is gonna get connected and that's what's gonna happen. So I do have the USB-C extension cable running from the Windows machine in the corner. If I plug that in, 
it's gonna ask tell me that the tower my mr p tower 6 is connected and it says allow usb debugging and this is the fingerprint key and basically it's just saying do you trust this pc to interact with this tablet i'm gonna say allow and that's it now i need to run qtscr cpsci program on my windows machine so if i run that I need to give a second or so, and here we go, the program is running. First thing, there is a button here, it says refresh devices. If you press refresh devices, uh, a quick uh, console output is going to happen, uh, showing you what's happening, and it's going to say, bingo, we found the device serial number R52, M80, etc, etc, etc. This means that the device has been found. Okay, I can press start the server and I will see the tablet screen. But before I do that, I wanna show you a couple of more options of what this program does. At the top, there is an option for you to set it up for screen recording. So at the moment, I'm just gonna say select path. And I'm gonna say record on a desktop, fine. So right now, everything what I'm gonna be doing on the tablet is automatically gonna start recording the screen. And once I've done it, I will have the MP4 file with the screen recorded. Quality is not the greatest, but still it's, it's, it's usable. Uh, record screen tick, I'll leave it tick, it means it's also recording. Background recording, I'm gonna leave it and tick. Some of the options, by the way, I'm not sure exactly what they do because I was playing around with this program since yesterday or day before, just for a couple hours. Uh, next thing is always on the top, I'm gonna leave this and tick. Screen off, if I'll tick that, basically what's gonna happen, when the screen is casted from my tablet to the windows, the tablet screen will be off. So tablet screen will not use pixels, brightness, battery, etc. The tablet basically the screen is going to be off. This is very, very good feature. So I'm going to leave screen off. Frameless, I'm going to leave it on because otherwise I'm not going to have an option for minimize, and uh, maximize or kill the windows. So I'm going to leave frameless off. And stay awake, basically leave the device always uh, up and running. I'm going to leave and tick. Another thing I will tick here, it says show FPS. So I'll just see how much for basically how good quality is coming in, how frame rates happening with the streaming. So everything is set up. Uh, by the way, there is an option for you to add your own scripts. And basically from what I understood uh, reading online, the scripts allows you to map your keyboard and, and the mouse to play games. I haven't had enough time for me to, to test this out, so I might do a video in the near future about it. And let me know in the comment section below if you want to see that. I haven't tested anything, haven't mapped anything, so I'm going to show how it's going to perform for gaming, etc., etc. But if you want to see that, obviously leave uh, your, your, your feedback suggestions in the comment section below. Right, uh, another option down here, it says wireless. It is a way to connect everything wirelessly. I haven't played it around yet, so I can't say yes, it's working, no, it's not working. So I can't, I basically, I can't comment on that. So, that's set up, screen recording set up, ticks where needed is added, device is found, I'm gonna click start server. And boom, this is my tablet screen. And as you can see, tablet screen right now is off because I made a tick saying turn off the screen. So right now, if I go full screen, and basically as you can see the quality because I am uh, the zooming everything in. So let me quickly go into Windows display settings and say everything zoomed in and 25, 125%. Uh, let's go full screen. Okay. No, nope, let's go back. And there is a button here on the right hand side says full screen and there is a home button, uh, app switcher, back button, basically what you find on your Android devices. So if you say full screen and here we go. This is the, uh, the tablet screen, not the ideal aspect ratio because it is 3440 by 1440p and I'm telling my tablet to go full screen so everything is stretched out, but still it's very usable. So I can go, for example, into a browser and open some, for example, Samsung Dex web page and can go in the computer, the wind, the desktop mode, which sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. So it's a, it's a bit flaky, but let's say I'm going to use the keyboard, which is currently connected to Windows. I'm going to say, Go to google.com, I misspelled.com. Here we go, and let's search for, for example, DAX on Windows. I am controlling the DAX on Windows through uh, from the, basically my Galaxy tablet is connected to a Windows using USB debugging feature via USB-C cable, and I'm controlling the tablet using my keyboard and a mouse. So, brilliant, great, I'm, I'm controlling tablet but I can go and enable the DAX on the tablet. And right now it's casting to my 
Windows machine. So right now what you see is actually DeX on my tablet, right now being shown on the PC. So I can go on here, open the browser. So as you can see, here we go, DeX on Windows. Let's try to open Reddit now, because like I said, sometimes Reddit works, sometimes doesn't. It's very flaky most of the times. Something is happening, there is a, there is a workaround, which I am not going to show, but there is a workaround to fix it. This is another thing for another video. Let's, for example, say, let's go to YouTube.com. So I'm opening YouTube. I can scroll through YouTube, fantastic. I can go, for example, and search for, I don't know, let's say, okay, Google Assistant just kicked in. Uh, let's actually run the game. I will run one game for you, which is called uh, time clickers. It's an idle game. You just run it and leave it running. And I'm playing the game on the DeX, on the tablet, which is being cast to Windows machine. There we go. The sound is a bit too much, so let's lower it down. And let's quickly buy all the upgrades. So in this game, I can have an option in saying reduce particles. Basically, this is a tick. That means it show everything. Uh, and then it says 60 frames per second. I'm going to say unlimited frames per second. I'm going to close that. So right now game technically running unlimited frames per second. But I'm actually receiving the stream from my Galaxy tablet to my Windows machine at between 59 to 60, 61, 60 FPS. So it's around 60 FPS. Very, basically it doesn't go lower than 58. And here we go. I'm playing the this uh, game on the decks, but this is actually being casted to a Windows machine. As you can see, I am opening the Windows Start menu and go back here. And like I said, there is a script which allow you to map your keyboard keys to a game. I saw a couple of videos uh, created by the people from Far East. Um, they, they're showing you that the PUBG working and, and etc. But to be honest, the performance, I expect the performance to be laggy, but it's actually perfect it's basically no no problem at all so right now i'm going to close that so as you can see let's go back to the the bigger 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 zoom just for you to see what i'm going to do next so that's it once you've finished using it what you need to do it says stop all servers button here i click on that and basically what's happening is closing all this all the connections between this program and the tablet, so keep closing. I'm just clicking a couple of times more just to make sure. And then I can unplug the tablet. Once I plug the tablet, screen is still gonna be off. I need to press power button a couple of times and the tablet goes back into where I left it. And this is the, the dex mode. So tablet is back where it was. On the window side, when you're closing this program, make sure you go after you close the program to a task manager and look for it look for a b d or a d b sorry a d b 32 bit or a d b whatever bit uh service that is still running in the background and you need to right click it and end the task you need to do that every time you close the program and finish using it because if next time you're trying to run the program and a d b that service is still running from a previous instant the connection will not happen Another thing, just to as a bonus, obviously this is works with the tablet. I'll grab my phone. With the phone, obviously I will not be able to cast the screen because it's I can't initiate the decks on my device on my Note 9 because it's a screen is small and just connecting the dummy the HDMI cable, etc., etc. There's a lot of faffing around. But anyway, I do have this Note 9 here, so let me run the Qt SCRPSI the program again. So we're running that again. Oh, by the way, here we go. There is an MP4 file actually recorded inside this a folder, but not the outside on the desktop as this set up. So let's quickly jump where I'm actually doing a bit of gaming. And here we go, running the game on this, that aspect ratio is recorded as the Galaxy tablet. So let's quickly skip through. And to be honest, the recording quality is not bad. It is pixelated a bit, but it's not bad at all. And I definitely can, for example, post this on YouTube just for everyone to see. And all this video is 115 megabytes and the length of the video is four minutes and ish. 
Right, okay. So node 9, I plug it in. Node 9 plugged in and node 9 already had the developer mode option enabled and USB debugging enabled as well. And starting DEX, so I'm gonna say no, I don't want a DEX. And let's quickly double check if I actually do have the USB debugging enabled because I might turn it off. Oh no, it is enabled, right? Okay, so I'm gonna refresh the devices. Okay, it's telling me allow USB debugging on this device. I'm gonna say yes, so do allow. Refresh again, it's found the device serial number, different serial number depending, uh, compared onto my Galaxy Tab S6. I'm gonna say start the server. And here we go. This is the Note 9. So this is Note 9 and the real Note 9, and this is the cascade. So you can see how lag your latency, what kind of latency you're getting between, between the uh, actual device and the streaming quality on the, on the, on the Windows machine. So open emails, close emails. Let's say I would like to open my YouTube page, open YouTube studio, loading, loading. Don't want to load. Let's quickly open YouTube app, opening YouTube app. Latency, to be honest, I right now trying to compare both, uh, both, um, both screens. Latency is almost none, maybe one millisecond or so. So this is how you can go and grab your Galaxy tablet with the DEX support and connect to a Windows machine using this program. Drag and drop features and etc. cetera are not working. It's not, like, it's not proper DEX on Windows. This is, but still it is very, very usable. And I, I believe that this program can be used not only with the Galaxy devices, pretty much any Android device, uh, you will be able to get your phone or your tablet, any Android device basically, and connect to a Windows machine and use it. And like I said, there is a script which allows you to map the keys. I haven't tested that yet because I haven't ch had a chance to, to do that. If you want me to play around a bit with the key mapping, let me know in the comment section below. And as I mentioned before, I'm stopping all the services, closing the program, going to task manager, and looking for ADB 32-bit, and I'm making sure that this is closed because next time when I'm gonna try to use it, it's not gonna work. Thank you much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.